I say the pledge here. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. for last the 15th of March. We are going to put them off until next meeting. Table them because Bruce wasn't here at that meeting. So I guess next thing is to approve payroll and they have $179,651.51. We approve payroll amount of one hundred seventy nine thousand six hundred fifty one dollars and fifty one cents. And I'll second that. Okay. Next, we need to acknowledge the receipt of the payroll claims accounts payable in the amount of one hundred ninety eight thousand two hundred and eighty dollars and forty four cents. Motion we approve, or acknowledge, not approve, but acknowledge accounts payable, uh, payable report, payable report in the amount of hundred eighty thousand two eighty forty four. And I'll second that. And then we have claims to approve in the amount of three hundred forty five thousand thirty nine dollars and nine cents. Who's that at compared to last time? On the claims, yeah, we're getting ready to close this Nothing that we need to be concerned about, Laura. What claims? On claims. On the claims? Yeah. Yeah, the 345. Right. And I just gave you that paper to come. Yeah, I have. We haven't approved it yet. That's yeah. why I was questioning. I wondered if there was anything you'd be aware yeah. of. It's, just, it's pretty normal. We don't have anything outstanding, anything, anything large or anything. All right. Okay. Make a motion we approve uh, claims in the amount of $345,039.09. I'll second that. Okay. Next we need to acknowledge the receipt of the payroll
The taxes are in the process of being printed right now as we speak. The taxes should be going out in the mail on April the 12th, which the deadline for taxes to be mailed out is April the 15th from the printing company. I've already published all three of the tax rates. They have to be, be published three times. The first publication has been no later than April 26th. That was done March 24th. The second publication is no later than May the 3rd. That was done March 31st. And then the third publication, no later than May the 10th, and that will be published, um, I've got April the 5th, but it should be this Wednesday. Good. So, every, so I've done all my jobs are on time, taxes are good, everything's going on time, like scheduled. Looks good. Any other questions? Facilities, uh, Matt, we have a contract. Is he here or is it just his contract for? That was one that Jim presented to the council okay. last month and month, month of March. And it's my understanding that Jim has a contract and he's going to have that signed. So I assume that with Jim being absent, we will probably push that into the next month. Because the council did approve to go ahead and sign the contract. Okay, so we're trying to think of Jim sent us an email on that. I was going through my emails I got here, and I didn't, I didn't have that from him. Did you hear anything from him, Nick? As the core facilities? Yeah. No. And that's the same guy that came in last fall and talked about doing the maintenance for Yes. Yeah, yeah he's the one that, he, yeah, the gym. He, he did get, I mean, he did send us an email, but I think that was before maybe last month or the 15th wow. okay. because I had given him a thumbs up as far as I was concerned to go ahead with it. If I remember right, you might yeah, have I too. think I said the same thing. But so. then I don't think he was here on the 15th meeting and I think Jim did say he would take it to the council. And the council approved it. Okay, so that's going to be a matter of waiting on Jim to get that. We'll yeah. just table that until he either I, emails you something I, or... Yeah, here's, here's what I found. It said the council approved the facility maintenance program proposed by core facilities that we approved. Okay. I'll let Matt Stecky know so he can move forward and we can sign on the 5th, which is today. It's a three-year program that costs $12,000. So I don't have the contract. We don't have the yeah. contract. Yeah. And it says, let me know if you're okay with. Uh, Which I, I think I sent him back. You did, and we both did. So, are you aware of the contract, or I haven't seen anything okay. on it now. Well, I guess since as we had already decided, and so was the council, if you come up with the contract between now and next meeting, then go ahead, Bruce, I can sign it because we've already approved it. So, that's I'll see if I can hold the contract. Okay. Drive to Death Valley, Death Valley, yeah. California, and see if Jim's got the contract. <laughs> uh, if you want a few days off, unpaid, no mileage either. It'd be more than a few days. <laughs> That's a long drive. It's a long way out there. Sounds I fun. got to fly. <laughs> okay, the WTHI, Steve Leatherman. Uh, what was the story on that? It's here. You hear? You come on up, and sit down there. And All right. Do I sit here, or that's yeah, right there. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My name is Steve Leatherman. I work for WTH Technology, and we're the company that provides some assistance to you with your GIS mapping. And today uh, I'm coming to you on a topic of data sharing. And the reason is, is we had a request from a company, a renewable energy company, uh, for county data. And the 
WTH is a company and one of the services that we provide for the county without charging anything is basically certain kinds of data sharing services. And some of those basically, as I say, do not carry a charge. So if, for example, the, uh, your county has 911 services and you want to exchange data with an adjacent county, we'll help put together an agreement and, and so that you can have each county can have each other's data. Uh, so that would be an example of just something that we do if we get a request. Uh, we'll get requests from local engineering firms that are doing a contract with the county or maybe a municipality in, in the county. And they'll say, we'd like some county data. We'll help them put together a, an agreement. We call it a limited use agreement. It basically says that engineering firm can do that work and can get data from the county. The county gives it permission to, and that data uh, basically can only use it for that project. So that's another example. If your school system uh, buys some transportation software and says, we'd like to get the roads and the addresses so that we can use that in, in that school system software, we'll help put together an agreement to do that. This request is a little bit different. This is a company that is basically saying we want to use the data for our own purposes. So we're not doing something for the county. This is a, a case where we want to use the data for our own purposes. And with 29 other counties that we work with in Indiana, we have a, a procedure and a process that basically follows certain provisions that are in Indiana's open records laws. And they basically say, if you set up an ordinance and, and basically agree to uh, treat everybody equal, it has that kind of request. So you have the same procedure, the same charge. Uh, then you can set something up and you can actually collect some money for that service. And for the 29 other counties, and this goes back probably over 14 years when we started up the first one, we worked with some county attorneys to work on an ordinance, and we started a process of working with counties when we had this kind of request from them. And the paperwork that I sent you was basically the same paperwork that those 29 other counties basically have, which is a sample ordinance. Uh, an agreement that basically is between the county and WTH to, to handle that kind of request. And the things that we would do is we have a data sharing application that you have a copy of. We would send that application out to that requesting party, ask them to sign it. We would uh, take that and with a cover letter send it to the county auditor and request that it be put on the commissioner's agenda for, for your review. And you have the option of approving that application or not approving that application. But if you do approve the application, uh, then we would get a copy from the, the auditor. We would bill that company. Uh, once we receive payment, then we would provide the data that they're requesting in the format that they requested. Um, so that is, is essentially the procedure that we would, would do. The typical fee for that service has been $750, of which WTH gets two-thirds of that, and the county gets a third. Bottom line, the county makes a little money on this. So it's one of those things that you're... That we're not taking money from the county. The, the county actually gets the money uh, but this, this kind of process has to be in place for you to, to make that charge and, and for you to receive some money. I will say the number of requests we get on this, it could be, you could go two years without having this kind of request. And the next uh, day you might have ten. But you might have a couple yeah. <laughs> that come in. Uh, I'll tell you that from our experience, the kind of clients that, that make this request. They can find the data that we're providing on your county WebGIS site. So if they just want one or two parcels and they're looking for some information, they generally can find it on that website. 
typically these are companies that it is cheaper for them to pay the 750 to pay the 750 get the research data all that. and have a process than it is for them to try to do it themselves and, and the counties or the or the kinds of companies that we found that make that kind of request these days are energy companies and we've seen a lot of renewable energy type stuff of late uh, a plat book company somebody that's going to do the county you know a plat book um, there are some national companies that collect primarily parcel data and their clients are typically banks and property insurance companies uh, the kinds of companies that insure floodplain insurance and that kind of thing they periodically want updated data uh, for their records um, all of these folks are basically using the data for their own use. They're not turning around and selling it. They're, they're incorporating it into their, into their software yes. for specific purposes. Um, so it just happened we had a request come in for Park County. Now I will say I called that person this morning and just to, to touch base with him, he had also asked for information from Putnam County, a, a neighboring county. Um, and what he basically said is, I'm on a fairly short time frame to complete the particular report he was working on. That is no pressure to you to make any decision on this kind of thing, but it might mean that he may go and do his report. It may not be the one request in the data, but I can guarantee at some point you will get this kind of request from, from somebody. Let me back up just a sure. minute. Make sure... And I don't want to make some difference or not, but now do, you, do you, did you say our county, you have our county data from the standpoint, are you, is your company working with our GIS yes. and that kind of stuff? Yes. Okay, I wasn't sure who yes, we have. Well, our MVP, our tax software is also connected to that WTH GIS map. So when you go into that map, you can see all their past taxes, all their deductions, the property card. You don't even have to walk into the courthouse. If you want to see your property card, you can pull it up, pictures of the house. Well, I wasn't sure if we were one of your regular one of clients. Ones. That's what I was yeah. kind of getting at. But we are your, one of your regular. What, what so these 29, mm -hmm. is that all your clients in Indiana, no. or do you have more clients we than have that? More clients. But 29 have signed up for this right. agreement. So how many clients do you have roughly? Like we're in, 50. We're in. Well, we have 150 municipal clients in Indiana. But counties. And counties, I'd say uh, 911. We're in 57 counties. We're in about 40, 42 highway departments, county highway departments, and about 30 to 35 um, GIS. Uh, parcel type. Okay. Uh, yes. So most of the counties that are part of the GIS or whatever have signed this agreement to let you guys, let you guys uh, get this data to people when they request. It. Typically, the ones that that sign this agreement are the counties where you were doing the parcels, and our software is is tied into that. So we're pretty close. I think there's maybe one or two counties that we have just picked up. Recently, that uh, and I wait for a request. Uh, so sure. when I get a request, then, then that sort of triggers my introducing this to you. Uh, I was just in Ripley County uh, about two months ago because they had a request and, and worked through them. But the process is the same for all of these counties. The procedure, the pricing, the, the it seems to have worked for 14 years. Uh, a key thing for us is you own the data. You own the data. So whether it's a free exchange, whether it's a, a county 911 board that's adjacent or an engineering that's asking for the data or this kind of situation, it always goes to the commissioners for their approval. Right. So we do not give out any data so unless even, we have Even though we sign the agreement, you still have to approve, still have to approve the application, the specific application that's that they ask for in the data. So. That's correct. And it's no cost to us. There's no cost to Because you. you've already got the data. Right. And actually, we, as you said, we get a little bit of, of money of that $750 fee. So. Yeah, the sample application agreement yeah. in here, too. Yeah.
And this requires, since it involves money, approval by both the commissioners and the and the council. Yes, I noticed that. Because it has a, even though it's a small amount, it still involves just both parties. So what do you think, Nick? Do you think you want to take some time to look it over, for like, before the next meeting? Yeah, and that, that way Jim can look at it, too, since he's not here. I don't know if he got a copy ahead of time or not. Yes. But he did? Yeah, he okay. okay. I mean, he, they may want to tender it to the council since they meet Thursday or whatever. Yes. So. But I want to make sure all of your questions are, are answered. And there's, I say, there's no pressure to sign it whatsoever. But this is the opportunity arrived. And, and so. It may be the same guy, but I happen to get a phone call today from a renewable yeah. energy uh, yeah. uh, uh, guy same looking guy. for. Uh, uh, but, it, but he indicated this was not anything that was going to be fast. He said it's going to be something that's going to take a couple of years to right. kind of move forward on. But he just kind of wanted to make me aware that they were starting to survey property owners on some renewable energy yeah. possibilities here in Park County. And, and, uh, so maybe the same the company or the nice same is, gentleman. is when all of this is in place, then everyone can handle a little bit more straightforward because there's a procedure in place, there's a pricing in place. I can, you know, usually at that point, the auditor, whoever's getting the call, a lot of them just say, we'll call the MTH and they'll, they'll bring you through the process. And, and, and then I'll basically send out that application and, and explain sort of what's going on. And they fill it out and get it to us and then we either approve it or don't approve it. Is That's this correct. the same one that emailed a while back demanding information? Yes. I have one question. So, would this go from the council in April or May? Well, I don't know. When's the council meet next? This Thursday. This Thursday. It's really up to you. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, yeah so I have no problem going ahead and bring it in front of the council. They, also, may, they may want to send it back to us before they vote on it. But at least they <laughs> so, look at it. And, but at least they would have an idea of, yeah, I don't know if. Mr. Leatherman can come to their meeting or not, but it's in the morning. That's the only problem. They meet at what, 10? At 9 o'clock this Thursday. 9 o'clock this Thursday. Thursday morning. I think I can make that meeting. Okay. So. I'll put you down. It's the same. It's the same. You could email me that, just, that way. I'm it's the same building here. Yeah, I'm going to be right back that, here. So. Sure. I'll have to check with John first to see if I can get you on the agenda. Okay. That's and fine. then if I can, then we'll do it. And I'll... So I'll check with John tonight, and then I'll email you tomorrow. Either, either way. To let yeah. you know. Yeah, that'd be great. And if that's the case, then you can get back with us. I do apologize. It's WTH, and on my agenda it said WTHI. Okay. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I don't care. I just. Do you have any other questions <laughs> while I'm while I'm here before you? The fees on here were just the common fees that we usually used. We have. We set those fees back 14 years, and we haven't changed them, and it seems to be the magic number. If it gets much higher, then they then they go to other things, and if, if it gets too low, um, I don't know, they're, they're probably happy, but then the county's not quite as happy, so. There is, I put one, there's one, um, it says the standard fee 750. There is a provision for providing more continuous data. And that's 1,500. The ratio is the same. It's two-thirds, one-third. We have one company that is a national energy consultant. Um, they have a number of counties in Indiana. They wanted um, the person they are reporting to wanted quarterly reports. And so we have that one company on, on that $1,500 deal. But that is even more rare than the 750s. Yeah, I think this is the first request we've had in a couple of years. So, mm -hmm. I, I total of those 29 counties, I get about 40 that go all the way through. Okay. So, so that gives you something, and that's been yeah, about a little over 30, one, one per county then per year. Or so, yeah. I, I, again, the concept I don't have any problem with. It's. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll let our attorney look it over Absolutely. and uh, the council at least hear mm -hmm. the theory behind it and what we're doing. And, uh, 
I'll just wait for your, your email and yes. proceed accordingly. And yep. Thank you again for letting me present to you. Nope. Thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'm not remembering about this appointment here. For Lord um, Brown and so Yeah. Okay. Yes, from Katie Potter. Well, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what happened. Obviously, Lori yeah. was effective. I assume the, the resignation was immediately, wasn't it, Laura, as far as you know? Right, yeah. Yeah, so she's not on the board, so we have nobody okay. representing us right now. Yeah. Right. Um, one Peter Bullboard's got three right. people on it, don't they, if I remember it's right? It's just for, for the board of review. Yeah, yeah, it's just a review for appeal assessments and that kind of right. stuff. But there's three and people on that Peter Bowler board, yes. isn't it? Yes. So right now there's only two active members, right. and Katie's just recommending Josh. And I have no problem with it. She feels that Josh can do a good job on the Peter Bowler board. I don't have any real problem with it. I don't have any reason to think Josh. Because would. she just needs an yeah. approval for us, and then I can change it on the right. Uh, commissioner's appointments. So. Just change the commissioner appointment, and then Josh will start taking over immediately. I guess okay. I don't know how often the Peter Bowler board meets, but uh, I don't think it's that often. It may be so more often during this can, time of the year because appeals yeah, are going on yes. right now. But yeah. uh, so it's not a lot at times. But I, yeah, it's not so. So I make a motion to uh, accept. Uh, the assessor Katie Potter's recommendation to appoint Josh Sorrells as the commissioner's uh, appointment to the Peter Boa board. And I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Justin, is Randy still? He was just right there. there, so he must want to die. Okay, okay. Uh, I was thinking, he said that they just was working on that last... Could be. We get, it happens that we got two letters. Last week. Because meeting. that one we got this earlier in the week from Chris Newman. That's what we've got there. Yes. But then in your envelope that she gave you just a minute ago. Oh, here? Yep. I feel, yeah, you have to, I feel bad up. It's from another gentleman, and I think it's the same road they're complaining about. I haven't seen that one, but... Um, but he said this is County Road 1000 East. I emailed you this when it first came. Right, in. yeah, from Chris. Uh, I was thinking he just told us last meeting he was... That's a really so, work. This may be taken care of, both of these letters to maybe resolve. But I think okay. it's the same road from what I can tell because this clean one talks about County Road 1000 East out towards Rocky Fork yeah. Lake. And then Chris Newland's talking about yeah. the Black Route, which includes County Road 1000 East, Ferndale Road, okay. the big this Rocky Fork Bridge. Bridge. So, with this letter, this was, and then with the. You'd like to look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. So it looks to me it's the same area. I mean, I, that's why it was, if Randy was here, or he was here, we could just ask him. Because yeah. if he's already working on this road, I think these letters are taken care of. But he stepped away for a minute, so. All right. Do you have any other new business? We'll just hold on to that yeah. until he gets here. I do not. Okay, how about in the old business? I do not have anything to do with you. All right. Do you want to wait the employee handler? 
brand is. We can just wait till he we'll gets back. We'll just wait till he do his report. The employee handbook, do you want to wait till Jim gets back to talk about it as far as comp time and things like that? Which I wasn't. They, wasn't that talked about last meeting? Yeah, I and I, I gave you guys a sample on. ordinance yeah. on it to look at. Um, since then, I talked to. Um, with the council, Reitzman, Roy, right. and he had a suggestion to add to it. Um, my thought process was, are we wanting any amendment to that to take effect next calendar year would kind of be my suggestion. Yeah, I was going to say. I guess if you want to add that to it and put it off until the first meeting in May, and that way we'll all three be here. Okay, because it just kind of addressed uh, use of comp time yep. and when it's appropriate and transfers of office and things like that that weren't formally addressed yeah. before. I'm dealing with the IRS right now. They're changing the rules on our tax returns right now. I mean, you can't change rules no. mid midstream, and I don't think for employees it would be necessarily That's fair to say we're going to have a new comp policy in May when they thought for the year this is. So I gr I kind of agree with you that I think it ought to be a clean breaking point. So the first of the year would be yeah. a better time to. Okay. So that being it. said, it's that being said, we got plenty of time to. to yeah. Three so I, we need to get us and the council have to have our heads together. I mean, if they like something, we like something. It, it, he's sure. the only one from the council seen it. With your blessing, I can pass it on to the rest of the council to review. So, by the time Jim gets back in May, we'll take care of it. Okay. Um, I don't know that I've seen it. Maybe. Did you send it to us? I gave it to you guys at the meeting, so you yes. might not have I had wasn't a chance. here the last oh, meeting. Yeah, yeah. So I'll email it to email you. Email it to me, then. Yeah. Let me kind of look at what you're kind of draft proposing. Okay. I if I have anything, I can throw that towards you. Okay. And it's real similar to what other communities are doing. We're not recreating the wheel by any means, yeah. but. Um, time to email. We talked about that about a year ago where yeah. Yeah. everybody has the same. Basic philosophy on comp time. Yeah. All right, Justin, you're up. Uh, currently, we have 71 inmates, 59 of them are our own, so 12 DOC. Um, our local population, about the last two months, have been picking up. Went from Mainly 40 or 45 say, of our own during COVID. Now it's starting to probably be a busy summer. It's mainly drug and theft or us, kind of like converters on their eyes. <laughs> yeah. Hot cool. item across the state, probably across the country. What do they use that for? They just sell them the uh, salvage yards or. It's something inside the catalytic yeah, converter. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, like what it is now. Huh. Yeah, or some precious. It's, it's precious metal. Yeah, yeah. Some kind of metal or something inside. Actually, I was kind of surprised that a fellow I know had a, as an older Ford truck he was parting out, and he had advertised it on that Facebook site to sell it. And the guy called him about buying just a catalytic converter, and he sold it to him. The guy gave him six hundred bucks for it, huh. and he said, "You got to know what you're looking for." But he told him after he bought it, he would take that to Evansville and get eighteen hundred dollars out. Oh, wow. of it. He gave him six hundred bucks cash. Huh. So, yeah. but he said certain ones had a lot more precious metals in them than others. So you got to be careful. I guess which ones you buy or which ones you steal. <laughs> which ones you steal? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of the big thing going on. Yeah, like yeah. we're hearing, prime minimum one hundred and fifty bucks for yeah. just your probably cheapest one or whatever. So, huh. uh, year to date collection so far from like sex offender fees, handgun permits, all that stuff. Uh, Five thousand five hundred fifty-eight dollars and twenty-five cents. Handguns permits still, still going on the rise for us. So still, still good business. Um, we held our seized firearms auction Saturday. How'd it go? Almost forty grand. I think thirty-nine thousand nine twenty is what we come up with. So we're just waiting to get the auctioneer and just see if they match what we tallied ourselves, but. It's so almost forty grand, and then we'll have to pay our fees. And some of them were forfeiture guns, so yeah. some of that will go like an attorney that handled the cases years ago. So, so we're hoping maybe having about thirty left over that goes into our firearms account. And 
forfeiture count. Yeah. And freed up a bunch of space in our evidence. Yeah. And that was our big thing, so that's all I have. All in all, did, did you think guns went high total? I say higher than you expected? Well, yeah, we didn't have a diamond ours, but I mean, a lot of them may have been high, but towards the end of the sale, I, you know, halfway through, he lost a lot of the crowds. So Did he? some of ours at the end went cheaper, I thought, than what they should, should have. But we still, still a lot of them went for good, good prices or maybe a little bit higher than them. So. And it, it was a joint auction, so we, yeah, were, we were second on the on sale the bill. So. Yes. We made space, so that was a big thing. Yeah, well, that's 30 grand you didn't have. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I don't have any questions for you if that's all you've got. Right. Thank you. Thanks, right. Jeff. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. You do. All right. It looks like, Randy, you're, you're it. Okay. <clears throat> Doing, We're doing pretty good. What we was holding off on, we there's a couple of letters here. I couldn't remember at the last meeting. Uh, they was complaining about 1,000 East. Uh, oh, let me see, 720 there by the big Rocky Fork Bridge. Mm -hmm. Did has my memory failed me, or did you tell me it? In Jim at the last meeting, that was where you was working. You just started that day. Yeah. Okay. I thought you did, but we had both these letters. So I wanted to make sure. Yeah, we well, have not done yet. But you are working on yeah. them, and you have. Well, them. I had to move them down to 1200 East okay. today, and probably tomorrow. Okay. And then they'll, they'll come back to 1,700. Okay, and I was pretty sure. That's why. We went ahead and held on this. I was pretty sure you had told me that that's where you was yeah. working. You had just started that day, I think, in the last meeting. So, I mean, it's like all of them. There's a lot of bad ones. Oh, yeah. They'll get done. They'll get done. The, yeah, uh, I'm trying to do them as we go. Yeah, I and mean, that's all you can do. The road going to Lena, that one's getting blacktopped, isn't it, off at 59? Oh, 59 Cold Bluff, yeah. Yes. But, uh, Lena Road and Ben Zant's not this year. Okay. Uh, I've had a couple complaints on them. And then something else I was got on my mind before we go any farther. On uh, uh, Jeffrey's Ford Road, mm -hmm. that's blacktop that we're doing, correct? Yes. And then Deer Run is okay. on the sub roads. Mm -hmm. uh, that place right there, I'm trying to think of, I think uh, Roger Siler lives there now. There's always a big hole and water runs out of the oh, hillside. The little house? Yes. Yeah, are yeah, we going to make sure that. get that ditch to, yeah. is all the pipes under those roads in pretty decent shape or is there any I think so, place? I haven't run all of them yet. But okay. Before we put the money on the blacktop. But yeah. Um, Unfortunately, we won't be able to get to all of them. We're going to contract, but um, we're getting what we can. It really looks really bad. Yeah. We're going to run out of time. Yeah, I think we all are. Yeah. <clears throat> you go ahead, man. Okay. I was just curious about fixing that issue there where the water's constantly coming out. Keeping that road saturated. Your annual employee quarterly reports. And then I have a out of cycle check. Um, we didn't get the bill to late on that or the invoice. That's why. I get it done now. That's okay. We didn't have any others, so we're. Get down. You see, it's in the mound of seventy-five hundred eighty-nine dollars and sixty-six cents. <clears throat> I 
And what's this for? Is the Terro Truck Center? Yeah, repair to a truck. Okay. EGR. EG, okay. EGR. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. All right. I make a motion. Approve the out of cycle check to Terre Haute Truck Center for $7,589.66. Well, I'll second that. Okay. Thank you. And you need this report also. That's because the got an email with our. Uh, Community crossing the grant money should be in your account around the 417 this month. That's about $938,990.76. Is that when will our contractors start? It probably won't be until later in the summer. It'll be sometime after April 15th okay. or so. Well, I didn't know what. Because it's the same company, basically, that yeah. does everybody. So I didn't know if maybe they would take care of Vigo County first before they I came up here. They took care of us pretty Did they do it pretty quick last year? Okay. Yeah. I guess a lot of hinging on just like things we talked about, you'll have to make sure you stay ahead of them. Mm -hmm. Get what needs done beforehand. And we do have Adams Road closed out here a little north on the 36. Bridge inspection knocked that little bridge down to 12 tons. There's a lot of semis goes up. <laughs> up to there. Byron? Yeah, up to Byron C. Yeah. And, well, even Hobson's use it. You cross the slack, you know, the, for milk. And then there's some others that delivers up in there, too. So <clears throat> we got it pretty well knocked out today. And hopefully, Byron will set the pipe. And, I'd say it's going to be closed for two weeks, just hopefully get done this one. Yeah. So when you get that done, then the weight limit will go up? Yeah, there won't be a weight limit on it. Okay, there won't be any at all. Because it's putting the pipe in. There's a 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 pipe in. So those semis can go back on that yeah. way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And we don't have to pay for the inspection. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we started patching last week. We patched all week. And... Back to patching again today. I had to patch all this week. We get one application and call him in tomorrow and do an interview. And we get about five or six more of those. Yeah, it would be nice. To did, uh, <clears throat> did one of the patcher trucks get hit? The yeah, and they're on British Road. I thought it did. Yeah. Do much damage to it? No, it didn't hurt it at all. Did oh, it didn't? No, it made that pretty big pickup, Ford pickup. Didn't look real good. Had a big scratch on the side. She just ran into it. I mean, she was awfully upset about it. She had, like it to, had the lights on the truck. Yeah, I seen it down yeah. there that they same day. They were trees right at the head of them. It's scary. Somebody yeah. don't get hit. Yeah, as long as uh, yeah, you watch out for the employees, hopefully mm -hmm. they stay safe. Yeah, a lot of them don't pay attention at all. That's all I have. Do you guys have anything else for me? I think I've already discussed pretty much everything that I had, unless Bruce has something. Yeah. That was just these letters, but I wasn't here at the last meeting, so. But it looks like it's taken care of one. Actually, one of these letters is from a client of mine, so when I see her, I'll just let her know that we're working on. Yeah. Well, I mean, it may take them a while. They can't expect it to be done mm -hmm. immediately, but I'll just let her know that. Yeah, I can say, hopefully, Wednesday they can get back to 1,000. And they think on 720, that would be the next one they want. And we'll move on down to 900 south. Name's that? No. Now that corner knocked out then. Yeah, well, like I said, this time of the year, you could throw a dart yeah. at the board and yeah. go anywhere, and, and there's work to be I done. Mean, I mean, 
been called and complained to because I started on the wrong end of the road. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's the difference? Yeah. That depends on the what holes. the color lives. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it does, yeah, but I mean, from the standpoint of repairing the road. No, it, it depends on what the color you got to you got to put a, something in all the holes anyway, so whether you start on the east end, the west end, north end, south end. We paved the road from Sylvania South to Jackson Bridge. You start the wrong end? Whatever it was. Yeah. No. The lady called me and said, I heard you're going to pave this road. I said, yeah. I don't want to pay you. I said, lady, you shocked me. That's the first yeah, call I've ever had for didn't, didn't want to pay you. She said, well, it's going to speed everybody up. I said, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Well, can you put speed bumps in? <laughs> no, we can't no, do that. We can't. I might put speed bumps out where I am. Thank you, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Thank Keep up the good work. Keep the guys' heads up. I know it's hard right now because everybody wants their roads fixed. Yeah, they do. It, uh, it just takes time, so they'll get to it. Any other comments? I think a motion we adjourn. I have a second. Question.